the name of the course introduction to robotics AUT 116 and that's exactly what this class is it's an introduction to robotics so this class doesn't deal with the actual robots uh, or industrial robots that we see over here we will go over there and look at them when we start talking about things uh, basically this class is just learning a lot about the language and the specifications for the robots uh, any trade that you're in if you don't know how to speak the language of the trade they take for granted that you don't understand the trade right understand that so this is predominantly a, a, a robotics or terminology class just learning how to speak the language uh, the robots that we'll be playing around with is over here on the floor uh, predominantly we'll be playing around with a little gray robot and a little mobile robot to work we'll try to get uh, this is a uh, key robot uh, set out by a Sobi company called uh, Easy is no longer in business but the company that actually makes the robot called White Box Robotics is still in play and makes the robot. Uh, then of course we have our toy employees which is our robot, even our robot that we were just purchasing. Uh, this guy is no longer in production but they do make variations of it. And then of course everybody knows the toy robot and the toy ride is our RC uh, then we have some, uh, these are, those are actually the robots, what we would consider to be robots. Uh, we'll talk about what, why the robot actually gets a lot of these protections. Uh, these little robots on the bottom, we take robots and we take the, uh, the AC, uh, 208 plan and we probably get to build one of these. Primarily, our primary robot that we're going to be dealing with is what we call the Lego Line Color Robot. Uh, that's a little unique. Everybody knows Lego, right? But what they've done is they've built a robot and a kit around Lego. And it comes with every part we need to make a robot, but we figure out what type of robot we want to make. And there's literally textbooks out there on all different types of robots you can make. And they have competition. You can see the different variations that, uh, that we make. The one that we'll be constructing about here, this is the one guy that we this little one that we construct for grade. And then what we do is we see these peak robots that we can copy from out of the class and uh, we can modify the robot in to see what it is and see the competition that we have to have to have to have to these are some of the robots that we'll be dealing with, primarily the uh, gray robot on the very, very end over there, and also uh, the Lego robots. Uh, this is the Blackboard site. This is Blackboard, and to log into Blackboard, by the way, the username for the computer, we have no problem with you using the computer here in the class, as long as you're not playing games or social media or anything like that, right? Uh, don't do anything on these computers. Don't install anything on these. Don't try to install or download anything on these computers. Don't change any of the settings on this computer. We had one person, uh, he was left handed, and every time he'd get to one of our computers, he would change his mouse over to the left hand mouse. And then what, then what, then what would he do when he left? He wouldn't change back. So every time, every class I taught, and this place sat down with that computer, you know, they didn't have, we have some people don't have streaming high computers here as far as setting up computers and stuff like that. They know how to use them, but they don't know how to set them up. Change, change the big road. So I ended up having to go back there in class. And kind of upsetting. So these are not your computers. They're the college's computers, which means you don't do things on them, right? But as far as going on the Blackboard and looking at the sites, Facebook and OK, if you come in early and you want to do that, that's fine. But you're in class, we don't do that kind of stuff, right? You understand that? Uh, this is the Blackboard site. This is the login for the computer. The username is MTSTU and the password is welcome. It's real, real uh, complicated. Uh, by the way, ever, we use a generic username and we use a generic, generic password. What that means is if you leave anything open and you leave this computer, if somebody else comes back and they log in using 
this username and this user password, then what? They see exactly what you were in. So if you had Blackboard open up to your grades and you had your grades up there, then what could the next person do? They'd come back, they would log in, Blackboard would still be open, and they would see all your grades. So what you need to do every time you use one of these computers is log off. If you log the computer off, what does it do? It closes out everything that you had open. Everybody know how to log off of one of these XP computers? Just click on the little Windows icon in the lower left hand side of the taskbar and choose what. Don't shut it down. Make sure you choose what. Log off. And then you'll be okay. So shut off everything. You'd be surprised and don't. Uh, luckily, a Windows XP does not offer to save passwords. Uh, but we do have a bunch of computers over there really, really nice. Why we haven't upgraded these machines, they, they're capable of running any operating system we have, but we still have a lot of applications that we use in classes that are not supported by Windows XP. So that's why we still have XP on the machine. And they do what we need to do. It's just that when you take tests and everything, don't use Explorer. Or make sure you use uh, Chrome. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to update them to uh, Firefox too. So. But this is the login. Once you get to uh, once you get into Blackboard, uh, this is uh, what you should see. So everybody should have got a Blackboard account. And on your bottom of your uh, syllabus brief, everybody got a syllabus brief, right? It should give you the procedures for logging into Blackboard. Uh, once you log into Blackboard, since everybody uses a generic password, and figuring out it would be very, very easy. Uh, what you need to do when you get on there the first time is change your password. And where you change your password at is up here at the top. You have your name, and beside this, we have a little scroll button, right? You just click on that, and then go down to uh, personal settings. Oops, sorry. Oh, we got it right here, settings, and then go to personal information, and this allows you to change your password. Make sure you use a password that you know, right? One of your standard passwords that you use, so you won't forget. Everybody okay? Uh, we use passwords. We use um, all our all our all our tests during the term are given through Blackboard. So if you don't know your password or your username, guess what? I don't have access to your password. I can show you your username, but I don't have access to your password. And this is the way we give tests. So that would get, that would be pretty bad. By the way, over time, uh, this list right here will get extremely long, right? You understand that? Uh, when you first load in, you'll come to what, when you first up go to Blackboard, you'll come to My Institution. And notice here's a list of all your classes. But these are all the classes you ever take at Lawson State Community College. So if you're in an associate's degree program, what happens? Well, what you can do is uh, this little setting button right here, if you want to click on it, uh, what you can do is just remove the check marks of the classes you don't want to be displayed. It don't make them disappear. You can always get them back, right? You understand. But what this does, and I do this every semester, and that way I'm only looking at the classes that I'm teaching. Of course, right now I've got a ton of them up there because uh, I have to let adjunct instructors set up their Blackboard sites and stuff like that. But it makes it really, really easy. The problem is, and while they do this, I don't know, if you go to courses, you get the same dang list, but what you did on my institution does not take effect on my courses. So if you go up here and, and come up, you have a little setting button that pops up, and what can you do here too? You can you can do the same thing, and that way only the courses that you're taking this semester will be displayed, and you don't have all those courses up here. That makes it real hard to find. So I might have trimmed down during the semester. So this is the actual Blackboard site for the course. And of course the Blackboard sites we see uh, has, uh, over here on the left hand side is the main course menu. Uh, you can hide it, 
So if you move up and down, you'll see this little arrow, and you'll hide it, and that gives you more room. But, see, when I move up there and hover there again, you see the arrow pops back. We'll have people, somebody every semester saying, well, I don't have the main course menu anymore. And what they do? They hit it, and then they couldn't figure out how to uh, how to get it back. So come back here and get you one of these uh, syllabus three. That's okay. First day of class, that happened. Okay, so this is the main Blackboard site for the course. And once you log in, uh, this is where you'll see announcements. I'm going to blow this back up again. Somebody picked them all up. Not all of them, I'll just one of them. That's okay. That's okay. So course calendar, this is where the course calendar will be posted. So when I come up with the, de uh, the test dates, uh, this is where they'll be posted at. Announcements, announcements, you need to check announcements. But what I do, when I send out an announcement, I also send it out with email too. So you'll get this two different ways. And actually we have three ways available. Uh, when you take your syllabus quiz, uh, it's going to ask you, do I have permission to use your cell phone number to send you text messages? Uh, that's up to you whether you want me to do it or not. So we have the ability to send out text messages. We use a, an application called Remind, which allows me to send text messages out to the entire class. It does not send out your phone number, and it does not send out mine. So what I can do is I can send you information in three different ways, so through announcements, through email, and also through Remind. Uh, it's been shown that over 90% 90 pe 90 of the people read their text messages about how many times you check your email. So if a text message pops up, it pops up on your phone instantly, right? You understand? Uh, by the way, there's another feature. Uh, it's on the Lawson State website called Cougar Alert. Cougar Alert. You need to make sure you sign up for that. Uh, Cougar Alert is the method where the college can send you out text messages when things happen. And that's, that's really, really important. So make sure you do that. It's on the college's homepage. BostonState.edu, right? Uh, assignments, these are where our assignments will be. This is what we're going to spend a lot of time in today is the first week. So this is the first week of the term. Uh, inf course information. Uh, course content, this is where all our lecture slides will be and everything like that. Uh, labs, these are labs. We give out labs, uh, but if you have a tendency to take your lab home and stuff like that and you forget to bring it back, uh, then it's your responsibility to do another copy, right? You understand that? It's not, it's not mine. We, we have a copy budget that we go over every year and they fuss at us about it. So, uh, you need to take care of that. Huh? No slap on the wrist. You just have to run off your other copy. No, they don't slap our wrist. They just, they just pull money out of everything else. So we got to be real careful. So recorded lectures. We record. Was, I'm recording this right now. So we'll post this up in this section right here. They're actually put up on YouTube. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube if you want to, but you'll see the lectures for all my classes, which is, uh, you know, there's probably two or three hundred up there right now. Uh, so I just recommend that you use this link. So in here, the only thing will be uh, is a link to the recordings for this class. Uh, this is where you go to see your grades. This is where the test reviews will be at. So we don't review for test in class. Uh, what we do, of course, it eats up class time, and this is a mini term or a week term anyway, so we give out a test review, uh, the class before the test. And then if you see any problems on there, and if you understand everything on that test review, you're going to pass the test. If you don't go over the test review, then you have a problem. Uh, what we do is, uh, since the tests are, since the tests are uh, computer based, we can't give you back copies of the test. So what we do is we post the test back online in a section called Previous Tests. Uh, all the tests in this class are what we call comprehensive, which means we put material from the second test. The only one that isn't comprehensive is Test 1. So Test 2, there will be questions or, on Test 2 that covers material that was on Test 1. And then on Test 3, there will be tests that covers material that was on Test 1 and Test 2. 
So how can you go back and look those over? Well, we put the test back up there for you. And then you can go up there, and before you take one, you can go back and I mean, test two, you can go back and do what? Review test one, right? Does that make sense? And then how do you study for the final exam? Well, the final exam has no new material on it. So how will you study for the final exam? Just go back and retake those those three tests, and if you do real good on those, you'll do great on the final. So I can tell right off the bat who doesn't do that because they do bad on the final. So you know, so a final, our final is no new material. It just goes back and does what reviews everything that we did during the term. Everybody okay? So that's the blackboard site. I think there's another. There's a couple more things down here. If I can get over here without changing my. Uh, so this is where we'll go and take the test. There's nothing out there right now, but on test day, uh, it'll pop up. We, we don't do tests at home. We do them here. Uh, every test is password protected, and I don't give out the test. I don't give out the password. Go ahead. Yes, you can. You're more than welcome on the computer. Just can't use your computer to take tests. That makes sense. Yeah, but if you want to bring your laptop in, that's fine. By the way, uh, if you want to charge your phone over here, don't plug your USB slot into my computer. Don't plug your phone into the USB on my computer to charge. Yes, sir. Into a robotic. What's that? Next door. Uh, so you can bring your charger in if you want to. And then, you can buy your charger in if you want to, and uh, there's power strips on the inside here. By the way, if you're in preventive maintenance, you're in the wrong class. It's next door. We have like seven people, people registered in the class, and you see a lot of people. For some reason, they don't show up for a class on the first day, for some reason, because they think this is all we do. But believe me, my classes, if you had my classes before, this is not all we do. Uh, this is where you can email me anything relative to this class. Uh, you need to use this little link right here. You can't check your email from here, uh, but you can send email. And what's nice about this, if you use this email, it automatically puts the class title in the subject, uh, in the subject line. You don't see it, it automatically pops in there. And what that does, it allows me to sort email from this class into a folder for this class. So I know right off the bat what it is and you know what it concerns you. Everybody understand that? Uh, if you want to email me, you can use the email instructor link right here, and this sends me email. But it also does the same thing, so it goes in the folder for this class. You'd be surprised some of the emails you get. People will do, you know, my email dot yahoo dot something, and they'll say. I don't understand what you went over today, or I don't understand what you went over last week, and then they leave. You know, and I'm doing five classes, and they don't understand what I went over today. So, but if you come over here and you say, if you do it from email the instructor, it goes into the folder for this class, and it comes up, I don't understand what you went over today. You know, or I have a question, you know, then I know who, the, I know what it's from and what class it's relative. So if you're going to send an email from now on, make sure you use this link right here. Uh, one of two things is guaranteed to not go in my junk mail, right? You understand that. And also, uh, I know exactly what it's for. Uh, this help down here is nothing about help for the class. This is help at Blackboard. Everybody okay? T2, yeah, it starts talking. Well, make sure uh, it hadn't been hidden. So, uh, what's, uh, how'd, you, how'd I show you how to do that? Yeah, when you go, uh, when you go to the courses, uh, click on this little button up here, and then see if 116 shows up in this list. 
and then just come over here on the left hand side if it's there click on that if it's not you need to go up to admissions and tell them you got good problems okay What y'all looking for? Into a robotic. Okay, this is the place. Find your place. Here's the syllabus break. Come up here and get y'all one of these. Introduction to robotics, right? Which one? No, this is AU2116. Now this is stuff right here. Oh, you room 107. Yeah, this is 107. I thought you were talking about the class. Yeah, this is a this is 107. So what we're going to do is spend a little time in the first week quizzes and course information. So here's your first week quizzes and agreements, and here's the syllabus. What we do on the syllabus, uh, the syllabus is like uh, seven pages long, and we have roughly 4,000 or 4,000 students at the college. Most of them are taking four classes. Seven pages times 4,000. That's a lot of paper. That's still a lot of three. So it's college policy now that we don't put, we don't print the syllabus. We put the syllabus on blackboard. That saves the college a bunch of paper. But the problem is that it's on blackboard and you go to the bookstore and you need to Google, then you can't get the blackboard to your book. So what we decided to do was give out a syllabus three, which is part of the syllabus, but it's just the very first part, right? So basically the first page of the syllabus is now on the three. So what we do is we print out one page. We give that out in class, and it's still your responsibility to read the law. So it's so everybody understand that. And plus, it allows us to change one document and not change a lot. So when you look at the syllabus, all, most of the information that's on the brief says C, C, syllabus. So let's look at the brief real quick and make sure we understand that. And if you lose your copy, what can you do? Yeah, you can come up here and print off one you said. But everybody should have a copy of the brief. So this is me. My name's Rich Raymond. I go by Rich. Uh, there's my contact information. Uh, of course, if you send in an email relative to this class, what I want you to do, I want you to log into Blackboard and send it through there. Okay, everybody understand that? Uh, that's my phone number. Uh, by the way, uh, once we set up Remind, uh, then then remind you have the ability to text me. So probably the best way to get in touch with me, because I move around to different buildings, the best way to get in touch with me is to email. So once if you allow us to set you up on this remind texting application, then you can do what? You can send me a text message also, which is pretty nice. Of course, my email comes to my cell phone, so I, I get both of them pretty, pretty rapidly. This is what we call a mini term one class. What we do with mini terms, I guess this has been explained to you, is that we take a class that's supposed to meet four hours a week over 16 weeks, and we make it meet four hours a class over eight. So you get the exact same amount of contact time. But what we do is we found out that we get more lab time. So it takes time to set up lab and tear down lab, right? You understand that? If you multiply that times times 16 weeks, it basically adds up to almost two classes. So that's why one of the reasons why we do a lot of mini term classes. And plus what it does, it gives you the ability to take two classes that one has a prerequisite for the other in one semester. So if we did intro to robotics, then you couldn't take a, you, get, you couldn't take something that had a prerequisite in it. By the way, if you're in the robotics program, you need to probably make sure you sign up for the operations and programming class. 
which is where we move over to the actual industrial robots, uh, it's offered in the term two, which starts in October. Yeah, you're asking a person that can tear a robot apart. So, you know, that would be, so to me, it's not hard at all. But it's not a, it's not, it's an entry level course, which means it has no prerequisites. Uh, 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 yeah, in, in, in industrial in industrial maintenance or in mechatronics, uh, which is a technology course, there's very few supposedly so, so easy classes. This, this is not, this is, uh, this is an easy program. And, uh, it's not my name. Okay, so you're, it's an elective course. So it, it's if you want to know if you want to know how to program an industrial robot, then that would be the class that you take. If you're not interested in learning, you just want to learn some of the terminology about an industrial robot. This is it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. Uh, robots are moving into the future. Right. I mean, we even got robots with chicken hamburgers. We got robots that are one cruise line. I don't know what you want to do that, but it has robots. You walk into the bar, you walk in the bar, you got a touch panel, you see you see what drink you want that turn that cup in that cup. So we got robots in the air. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think that uh, we have a it all depends. Uh, the, the actual robot technician learns depends on the experience. But the high end, for a few years, would be over $20 an hour. That's not exactly what it is. And, uh, and we have three, they have two level pay, average pay. I think you have drafts for $20 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could roof a house for more than that, too. <laughs> but my father in law, you're right, you cut grass. I do. <laughs> I, I do too. Uh, but I would much rather be in a place like this oh, than, yeah, that yeah. Uh, than up on a roof in the summertime. Yeah, I learned real fast that I didn't want to be a roofer. And I learned real fast. I cut my grass. And I cut my knees. But uh, you know, I learned I wasn't going to do that for a living. You're right, there's good, there's really good money. Stuff like that. But we're talking about, we're talking about, we say work. We're talking about work. Okay, if you get out there and see these guys, you know, 100, 100 degrees out there, those wee weeders. So you're right, there's other professions that you can, you can make a good money driving a truck too. You know, so, uh, but you're looking for a trade where, you know, where, very, very interesting. So cutting grass can be interesting sometimes you get problems. But you're running into a trade that's that's gonna challenge you all the time. You really want to Everybody to me I like it a challenge. And also it's something that you know, it's the way it's the future. Of course grass is gonna be around hopefully forever. <laughs> as long as we're around, you know, there'll be a job in that. But robotics man is gonna be you know, it's got nowhere to go but especially since we had so many uh, automobile manufacturers move into here. So not only uh, getting into jobs at Mercedes, we have a lot of people working for Mercedes. A large majority of the people work at Mercedes. And you got to listen to these people, you know, where do you work? I work at Mercedes. These are usually people that's not working for Mercedes, they're working for what? What we call tier one manufacturers or people that they contract that out. We got tons of companies up here in our area uh, that supports the automobile family. Vance, Vance is not they 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 are an assembly company. They don't manufacture; they assemble, which means what? Well, it means robots. But it means they they don't they don't make them. Somebody else makes them, and then they ship them to the state. They don't make the city. 
Rolls makes the seat. And then they ship them to Mercedes. And then Mercedes and Vance gets all these big trucks coming in. So that's really, really good for companies. And this area is not necessarily Mercedes. It's the companies that do a lot of support Mercedes. It was really interesting because Mercedes uh, had a had an agreement uh, with training through Shelton State Community College. And so that could be considered as a technician uh, or coming through their apprenticeship program. You had to go through Shelton State Community College. But they're so desperate for people, they they hired some people right out of the college class. So our primary uh, employers in robotics is not necessarily Mercedes, but some tier one companies that do a lot of that support. But you're right, there's a lot of jobs out there that pays more, but most of the jobs that don't require specialized training is jobs that most people are trying to get out of, right? I, mean, I can make some good money. Uh, alternate contact is uh, Mr. Hoyt Sanders. He doesn't know a lot about robotics, but he can definitely get in touch with me. Uh, textbook for the course, and I didn't bring it out. Anybody got a textbook yet? Uh, this is textbook for the course. How much we pay? How much cost? Fifty-one seventy-five. Uh, there's no lab book for the course. We give out the labs. Uh, this class, you have to make sure you have, anytime we're in lab, you're going, everybody's going to be wearing safety glasses with side shields. Everybody understand that? Uh, they sell them in the bookstore. They sell them for, at Harbor Freight for a couple of bucks. So it's not, it's not a very expensive proposition. Uh, you need a tape measure, uh, with a metric scale. We're going to deal a lot with the metric scale in this class. Uh, robotics deals a lot with metric. Everybody understand that? We'll get a feel of that, our measurements. I'm not sure. We we don't have a relationship with the bookstore like we used to. Uh, two years ago, uh, the, the college owned the bookstore, and so so we basically were in really good relationship with the with the guy because he worked for the college. Uh, last year, they turned the bookstore over to a to an outside source, uh, and believe it. So we don't have uh, as much communication as we do. Uh, what we do is we turn in a book order and we put supplies on there that we want to stock. But it's no longer up to us if they stock them or not. Hopefully not. Uh, if we can't, if you have problems getting the tape measured, then just let me know and we'll see what we can do. Scientific calculator, so that's required for any technology course, so make sure you get those. Uh, and what we do is when we deal with the robots, we we have a very limited consumable budget. So what y'all need to do is make sure you buy these batteries for us. Uh, when we start programming some of our robots, uh, uh, we'll talk about a technique called offline programming, which means you actually write the program on a computer and then you upload it into the robot. Uh, we don't want these programs to be stored on our computer. So what do we want to do? We want to have a thumb drive that you bring in and put all your programs and everything on that. Are you okay? Uh, anything else? First week quizzes, uh, you are required to read the official, the syllabus brief, which everybody has a copy. Everybody in here has a copy of the syllabus brief, right? I know that some people came in. Uh, you're required to read the syllabus brief, the syllabus, the dress code, the safety and evacuation procedures for the Bessemer campus on Blackboard during the first week. And where's that at? Well, that's in the course information section. Everybody okay there? And then there's several quizzes you have to take. Uh, you have to take a quiz on the syllabus to show that you did what? Read the syllabus. Uh, you have to do a syllabus agreement, which is very, very important. Uh, what that says is it says, I agree with the contents of the syllabus. 
If you don't agree with the contents of the syllabus, guess what? You can't take class. Everybody understand that? So it's very, very important. We do that next class. So we want the syllabus agreement to be done by next class. Not in the test. It's, all this is in the first week quizzes. So first week quizzes and courses. Yeah. So this is what we do first week. Tests are going to be tests. Test is going to be test. Right here, right here, what does it say? First week quizzes and agreements. And then, of course, here's your syllabus quiz. Here's your syllabus agreement. So when you click on that, uh, it's going to come up and say, do you want to begin the test? So it's pretty straightforward. And this is what the syllabus agreement says. Is by clicking and submitting agree from the options below, I understand and acknowledge that the syllabus I have read is a binding contract between myself and the college. I agree that my instructor did review the syllabus with me during class, during the first class, and did allow for questions and answers during that period. If I was absent on the first day of class, I did review the, the recording for the class for that day and submitted any questions pertaining to the syllabus to the instructor through college email. If I disagree, I must schedule an appointment with the instructor during his or her scheduled office hours to discuss my options. Until I agree with the syllabus, I will not be allowed to attend class. Okay, everybody understand that? That makes sense? So we have a lot of people that don't show up for class, but they don't even check their blackboard, they don't check their email, and then they come trucking into the second class and expect me to go back over everything that I did on the wall. On the first class. So this is, uh, then, uh, then it's pretty easy. This is kind of like a EULA, uh, end user, user license agreement that you do on a lot of software. You either do what? You agree or disagree. But if you disagree, you can't take class until you decide, until we figure out what's going on. If you don't ever agree, then you can't take class. That makes sense. But it'll be hard not to agree with the syllabus. It's basically the syllabus. Uh, for just about all classes. You'll see no matter what classes you take at Lawson, sections of the syllabus are going to be the same. And of course, understanding the safety and evacuation procedures for the campus is also uh, very important too. And of course, the syllabus quiz just asked you, unless the syllabus agreement correct. Syllabus quiz, the, the second question on the syllabus of, of quiz is, is not part of the syllabus, but that I thought it would be a good place to put it, is that if we can use your cell phone. So what the first thing the syllabus quiz is going to ask you is it's going to ask you for a phone number that you can always be reached at, which is basically now your what, your cell phone number. And then the second question is going to say, is it okay if I use that to send you text messages? Uh, that question, if you answer no, that's fine. Uh, you get credit for the question. If you answer yes, that's fine. You get credit for the question. If you answer no, I will not send you text. You, you can't text me. Uh, if you answer yes, then we can communicate through text messages. No. Oh. I'm going to sign you up. You can sign up for Remind, but if you if you give me permission to do that, I will sign you up. And you don't have to do go through that procedure of signing up for Remind. It's just, there is a procedure out there that we usually give out, but we found out that this is actually a little easier. And you find out students don't mind if you do it for them, but uh, then they have a tendency to not do it themselves. And then they wonder why they don't get text messages. I don't remember the number that pops up. It's like an 8010, something like that. Uh, but I'll, when we start off, I'll say, this is Rich. That'll be the first part of the text. And make sure uh, you read that text message. After a while, you'll see that it's for me. But it will be a number, basically, that pops up everybody that says, Remind does not send out your number. It sends, it sends like a little code out there. I forgot what it is. So what else is on the brief? 
So my contact information, uh, and this won't be on the syllabus, it's be on the brief. The books that you use, the required supplies, uh, that's on the brief, uh, explains about the first week quizzes that tells you how to log in the Blackboard. And this is very, very important that you get this out of the way. So some of y'all are brand new students, and every once in a while, things are not exactly set up right. So that, you need to do this almost instantly, is make sure you can get on the Blackboard. If you can't get on the Blackboard, then you need to go back to admissions and figure out what's going on. You need to get that taken care of this week, right? You understand that. Uh, this gives you the procedure. You need to change your password. I think the default password is your birthday. So is that still correct? You need to change your password first right off the bat, too, because it would be very easy for somebody to get into your Blackboard site. Uh, also, your college email. Uh, this gives you the access on how to access your college email. And, of course, the default password for this is ABCD12345 with an asterisk outside that. And once you get on there, you need to do what? You need to change that password too, right? So the login for your Blackboard and the login for your email is basically the same. How to change your Blackboard on that, I don't know. Uh, we, we, uh, I get my Blackboard through, I get mine through Outlook. Now I think they're using a, a second source. I think they're using Gmail, but they're, but we have an account set up called students.licensestate.edu. So how do you change your password there? We have to figure it out. So that's the brief. Everybody okay with the brief? Any questions on this? Yeah, it was. I didn't change that yet. This okay. Week. Nancy's getting out of the instructor business all together. So for a while, uh, Nancy is still department head, so she wears two two hats. So she's over the manufacturing engineering technology uh, division at the college, and she's also assistant dean. And for a while, she was actually teaching, so she was wearing three to, three hats. But she's she's trying to get out of teaching now, unfortunately. An excellent instructor. Uh, so she's not going to be an alternate contact anymore. Uh, Brittany Legrand is on the brief. So I'll change that. Thank you for that. Uh, Brittany Legrand is a new instructor on the college. Uh, at the college, she's next door. I don't know if y'all met her yet or not. Uh, but she just started this semester. And so she'll be the alternate contact. Either that or Hoyt Sanders. I think uh, what we're doing now, since Brittany is new, uh, we're assigning, uh, assigning Hoyt as alternate contact. And if you're taking any of her classes, then I'll be the alternate contact for her class. Any more questions? Okay. What do you mean by this quiz? Okay, at the very first, at the very, when you hit on first week, first week courses, at the very top it is not available. So it's not there yet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so you can see after a while, uh, you can take the syllabus quiz as many times as you want to. Now, there's, but you need to let me grade it the first time. Everybody understand that? Because uh, we can set up, Blackboard does a lot of grading for us, but there's no way in the world Blackboard knows your phone number. So when you enter your phone number, there's no correct answer. So what I have to do is I have to go in and give you credit for that, that, and also when you enter the tools and supplies, it would be hard for Blackboard to grade that because you give them in random order, right? You understand? So when you, when you take the test and you look at grade book, it's going to have a little yellow circle on there that says need grade. So you don't need to go back and keep taking the syllabus quiz until I grade it that first time. And then what, what I'll do is, and then after that, so let's say you take it and you make 75 of them. Well, what, what we do is we let you read, and that's not good on the syllabus quiz, right? You understand that? 
So what we do is we, we leave that open up for about three weeks so you can keep going back and doing what? Retaking it until you make a hundred of them. And the questions don't change, guys. So anybody that don't make a hundred on a syllabus quiz, it's your fault, it's not mine. But wait for me to grade it the first time. It'll be next week before I grade it the first time. Everybody okay? And then you go back and you can read. If you don't like your score, you can do back, do what? You go back and retake it. This, the safety and evacuation quiz will be there for three weeks. It's nothing but multiple choice, primarily true, false answer. Uh, you can retake that as many times as you want to. And it, it will grade completely. So that means if you take the fire and evacuation quiz and you don't like your score, you don't make a hundred on it, what can you do? You can go back and take it again. Everybody okay on that? But it'll only be up there the first three weeks because it's silly to let people take the syllabus quiz all semester long. So it should be there now. Thank you. Everybody okay? So let's look over the syllabus. We're going to go over some important. You're required to read the course syllabus, but there's some things I need to go over that we have problems with every semester. Every semester I teach, we have the same problems, and it's right, all of it's right here on the syllabus. We had an adjunct instructor. We don't use them anymore. Was teaching a class. And he didn't tell the students to buy the books. And there's quite a few people in there that didn't buy the books. And then when it came to the end of the class, they needed the books. That's what they said. Well, he didn't tell us to buy. Well, guess what? It was, it was under the required material under on what? On the brief. I mean, so there was, it was required for the class. So it was a lab book, by the way. So they finally got to do it in labs, and there's a bunch of people. Uh, no prerequisites for this. So here's here's the uh, textbook again. Here's Blackboard, college email, uh, course policy. These are the student learning outcomes for the course. So when you get out of here, hopefully you know and pass the course, you should know all this stuff. Uh, this is the way your, uh, your class is scaled. So I had a student one time uh, made a C in the class, and he said, when I added up my all my averages, uh, I came up with an 80 average. But what, what he was doing, he was taking the averages for all these things. He was adding them together and dividing them by, by five, I mean by six. And he didn't realize that the first week quizzes don't have the same weight as what? Everything else, right? You understand that? So you can't, all the averages are on your grade book, by the way, but you just can't add those together and divide them by six and come up with your scale because why? Because every one of them has different ways. Everybody understand that? So we've had that happen before. Uh, but you could take what your average and multiply it by 0 0.02 and the test average by, by 0 0.25. Uh, you, then you could come back and add those together and come up with your grade. So that's calculated. So, uh, your big thing, first week, first week quiz is 2% of your grade. You're doing all your assignments and homework, which is up in the assignment section, uh, is 13% of your grade. Your test or what? 25%. Labs are 35%. Uh, just having your required supplies is what? 5% and the final exam is 20%. So nobody's exempt from the final exam in this class. Everybody understand that? By the way, another college policy is it takes at least a C to pass the class. So a student must earn a grade of 70% or higher to pass this course. Students who receive D's or F's, uh, which is below 70%, are required to repeat the course. Everybody understand that? Uh, by the way, on your test, what we do is uh, we don't give makeup tests in this class. The way the tests run, this is a mini term class. We do it in eight weeks. Uh, so what we do is we'll take the class, uh, test one and two, we'll take it. We don't take a test and go home. Well, that's not true. Every class counts as two classes. Everybody understand that? 
So we can't give a test at the beginning of, of a class and let you go because we would lose the instruction for 101 class. So what we do is we give the test at the end of the class. And if you finish early, what can you do? You can go home because we give it at the end of the class. If I gave it at the end of the start of the class, what would you have to do? You'd have to take the test and you would have to hang around for the rest of the class. Everybody understand that? So we give the class at the end of the class. Now, what we do though is on test days, we don't go over new material. We'll be in lab the first part and we'll take the test. Everybody understand that? All except, and then what we do is when we come back in the next class, we go over the test. If we, if we did make up tests, then I couldn't do what? I couldn't go over the test because we would have people that hadn't taken the test yet. So we don't do makeups in this class. But what we do is we drop the lowest test score. So that means if there, it pops up in a mini term class, eight week class, if you miss two tests, then you couldn't pass the class anyway. Everybody understand that? So we'll come up with a test schedule. I'll say, okay, these are the days we're going to give the test. And we can't move the, those around. We have very, very leeway on these tests because we want, to, we want the same number of classes between each test, right? You understand? So if I move the test one class, it would be like moving it a week. And then it would cut down on the, on the on amount of material we could cover on the next test. So what we do is we give out, I give out a test schedule. I say, these are the days the tests are going to be on. Of course, we understand that thing, things happen. So what we do is we drop your lowest test score. So if you're absent on the day of a test, it's not going to hurt you. Unless you fail the rest of the test, right? And this happens all the time, too. I had one student, every test we took, that was the test he wanted to drop. <laughs> I said, you can only drop one. <laughs> so. So I'll give you out the test schedule. I'll say, these are the days we're going to have the test. And we don't do makeups. We don't have makeups for lab either. We don't have time to make up labs. Uh, you'll be working with a team of two people. Two people will be working together on our labs. So if you're absent, what's your team member going to do? No, what they're going to do, he's going to continue on. He or she's going to continue on. And then when you come back, when you come back, is your team member going to have to go back and let you make that up? No, you just lose credit for that. Everybody understand that. But we do scale the labs. So missing one lab won't hurt you. Missing multiple labs will. Uh, in an eight-week term, every class you miss is like missing two classes. Everybody understand that? Uh, we can't do anything about lab, but there's no excuse for missing lectures because I record the lecture. So three tests, not including the final, is what it says. We drop your lowest test score, no makeup test for light uh, test. Uh, final exam, no one is exempt from the final exam. Assignments and homework, uh, labs. Uh, we turn the labs in during the term of, we don't turn labs in. We've had this happen too. And why we do this. So every, every time we do a lab, uh, we'll do a lab in class. A lot of your labs have questions on them. You'll do labs in class and you answer your questions on lab questions at home. Everybody understand that? So as soon as you get your lab signed off at the end, then the lab is due the next class. Everybody understand that? If you don't turn it in, then we lose we lose points for every 24-hour period it's not turned in. And why we do that is that I've had this happen more than once, and this is why I started doing this, where I've literally had students come in the last, they take the final exam, and they want to turn in 15 labs, and they want to know what their grade is. They'll be handing me that lab and says that I passed the class. And I do, these labs are graded. So I've had people turn in blank labs. So they, the lab will be totally blank. They put their name on it and turn it in. They think what I do when I go out there and do labs, I just look at the lab and see if it's turned in and I give you credit for it. These labs are graded. So if you turn in a blank lab, you still get what for it. 
You still get zero, right? So turn your labs as you go along. Don't hold on to those labs because if you wait a week to turn them in, then you get zero on them anyway. Oh, that's your sick. Uh, what else we need to do? Course withdrawal. I have problems with this every semester. I cannot withdraw you from this class. Everybody understand that? Y'all understand that? So if you stop coming, you are not withdrawn from the class. And you're graded like you're here. So that means if you don't do the lab, you get a zero on it, right? You understand. If you don't take a test, you get a zero on it. At the end of the semester, what grade do you get? You get an F. Everybody understand that? And people think, for some reason, if they take the class and make an A on it, that the F is gone. No, the F is part of your grade for there. That means if you take the class, you make an F in it one time, and then you retake it and make an A, you get two points for that class which means puts you at a C average. So what you need to do, if something happens and you can't attend this class, then what do you need to do? You need to withdraw from the class off the college's website. Everybody know where's that? Best place to find it, uh, people, is on Quick Links. I don't see a link to the college's website. Go up here under quick links, then under student links, then go to more student links, and then right here it says what in red. He withdraw, but you can withdraw. You withdraw from the class. Uh, they'll write. They'll send me. A, you'll get a W in your grade column, right? You understand that? A W. You'll have to retake the class, but it don't count against your grade point. Uh, I recommend if it looks like you're failing the class. I recommend that you that you stay in the class until the last day to withdraw. And that way, when you take it again, it will be a repeat, right? You understand? I don't know. Red Corvette. That, that car, they get all those cars donated every year, which is really nice. And you know what they do when they, at the end of the year, they scrap them. Well, they just about have to because they get tore apart, they get worked on, they get moved around. And you, you sell that car to somebody, then they would be liable for that car. So they do, they scrap all those cars. Even the red Corvette. Are we okay? I know we're, I know we need to take a break, guys. That's okay. Let's get through this first. So e withdrawal. You withdraw from the course before the last day to withdraw, then you get a W. If you go past the last day to withdraw, uh, then you'll be graded. Everybody understand that? So there's a published last day to withdraw. It'll be on the course calendar. Uh, they'll send you out an email uh, letting you know when it's the last day to withdraw. If you withdraw after the last day to withdraw, then you will get, you will be great. So make sure you do that, right? But, but wait, and it's around the third test too. So uh, that's what I recommend you do. Uh, we've had students do, I had one student that dropped out of a class at motor controls after the first test. And then he came back, and did pretty good on the first test, but failed the second. Because all the material on the second test was new material. Uh, next time, but then he wanted to withdraw again. And I told him, I said, you need to wait around. And he ended up making a C in the class. So what I'm saying is that 
you understand. So I, I recommend you stay in as long as you can. And then that way, if you take it again, it will be a repeat. So all the material will be, you'll be getting it the second time. But if something happens and you need to withdraw, you can do that online. So if something happens, and even if you're in a hospital, you can get somebody else to withdraw you, right? Or call the music. Uh, recorded lectures, uh, that's a course withdrawal, and then the rest of it we're not going to look at. Uh, because there will be uh, covered on the syllabus. So that's the Blackboard side. Anybody got questions on the Blackboard side? Is everything up there now? I think we've got a couple things that popped up, which is really good. The first week quizzes were not made available. And that's something I have to remember to do. You notice they pop up on my, that's the problem, they pop up on my page, because I'm the instructor, but they're not visible on your page. Uh, so anytime that happens, uh, that something's supposed to be there and you can't see it, you need to drop me an email. Or if you set up Remind, what can you do? You can send me a text. But like email, uh, email comes to my phone. Uh, so even if you send me an email, I get it almost instantly. You set my phone on the updates for like every 30 minutes. Okay, guys, y'all go ahead and take a 10 minute break. Let me tell you where everything's at. At the restroom, or if you go out here and take a ride and go down the first hallway, the restroom's at. Uh, if you want to, uh, the drink machine's upstairs. If you go up and go up these stairs, uh, you can put the drink machine. Uh, there's an elevator in this building. Uh, if you go past the men's room, it's the first little thing into the right. There's an elevator. You can take it up the second floor if you need to use an elevator. Anything else? Uh, I gotta switch to the TV. Okay. I'll take a break. Ten minutes. Or like it said, the Chinese restaurant. Ten minutes. Huh? Yeah, we should have water here for those people. No chip. Well obviously.
I gotta do the wrong. I gotta do the wrong thing. So you need uh you need to make sure you uh, look at that record your lecture sometimes. Yes, I will. And then the, uh, of course, this might not be up before then. Because the it's still this quiz that I would need to take. It, it, it should be underneath that first week, but it's not underneath. quizzes. First week quizzes. First week quizzes. Let me look and see if it's if it's not. Make sure it hadn't been blocked out uh, like the other. It might it might not be available either. 